This is the Paul McGuire Report. I'm Paul McGuire. On today's program, we're going to deal with important subjects that revolve around this fact. And the fact is that you, your family, your loved ones, people that you know, in fact, every person born on planet Earth was not born on planet Earth to be a slave or to be ruled as a slave by some group visible or invisible. Now, that's the basic premise. And the only way you can arrive at that basic premise is you have to have a biblical worldview, which means you're looking at reality, you're looking at history through the lens of God's Word. Not because you're superstitious, but in fact, on the contrary, the more educated a person is, the more knowledge, good knowledge that they mass, the more powerful, the more free, the more liberated that person will become, and then the sometimes invisible chains of slavery are broken off of them. But you see, this can only be arrived at from a biblical point of view. When we go back to the original template, the original blueprint, the original design for mankind, We only discover that in one place, and that's in God's holy word, the Bible, the Old Testament, and the New Testament, because that is the only spiritual book that contains the absolute truth. And the unique thing about the Bible is it was directly authored by God through the power of the Holy Spirit moving through men. Now, people mock that. They think they're too sophisticated for that, and they think it's an impossibility that God, that a real God exists, like the God of the Bible, and how could he possibly write his holy word from Genesis to Revelation supernaturally through the power of the Holy Spirit? So they scoff at it, they mock at it. But here's the basic problem with their analysis. The problem with their analysis, which is completely faulty, is that they are looking at reality, they're looking at history, through the lens of their finite human minds. And as I said at a recent Paradise Mountain church meeting we had just a couple of days ago uh, on prophecy and prayer, I held up a cell phone uh, before the audience and I, I said, I'm being generous, I said, and my cell phone is an Android cell phone, you know, the standard size. I said, I'm being very generous. Let's just imagine for a moment that this cell phone I'm holding up before you represents all the total consciousness and knowledge in a finite man or woman's brain. I said, but you know what? That's too generous. So let's just pretend, and I'm still being really generous, that just half of my cell phone represents all the knowledge, wisdom of men and women with their finite brains. Now, I said, people are are taking their finite brains and knowledge, and they're lifting it above, and then I held up the cell, half a cell phone. Well, I didn't cut my cell phone in two, obviously. <laughs> I, I lifted up the cell phone higher, and I said, now pretend that God's brain, just, just for the sake of illustration, because it really doesn't come close to the full knowledge that God has, God is the infinite personal living God of the universe. So his brain, his knowledge, his wisdom, his understanding are infinite. And I said, this really doesn't do his wisdom justice, but just imagine looking up at the night sky on a clear evening and looking all around you unobstructed, and you're looking at the starry night with all the stars twinkling and all the galaxies out there. I said, that just begins, just begins to represent the infiniteness of God's mind, his knowledge and wisdom. I said, but finite man, and I held up this cell phone, finite man puts themselves above the knowledge and wisdom of God, and I held up the cell phone over this imaginary uh, view of the stars at night, and then places judgment, or, or says, we are superior to the mind of God. And I said, that's what humanism is. And that's also what certain um, 
types of Christian beliefs are. They think they're smarter and wiser than God, which is absolutely ludicrous when you just compare the size of God's mind versus the total size of man's mind, which is like a cell phone, and I'm being extremely generous. So God's brain, you know, is infinite. It's, it goes on without end in the universe. And that's why he's the infinite personal living God of the universe. He knows everything. So why would somebody with a little pea brain, that probably would have been a better illustration. I should have taken a bag of frozen peas and, and passed out a frozen pea, one solitary frozen pea, to each person in the audience on a paper plate. And I said, that's about, that's, that's, that's about the size of your consciousness and my consciousness too, and brain. Okay? That's our sum total of all our knowledge. Now imagine a pea brain like we have as finite human beings decided, deciding to go up above the mind of God, which is infinite. And we use the night sky and the stars as an example. And then decide the pea brain decides that it knows better than God's infinite mind and consciousness. Well, it's absurd. And I was talking specifically about the 74% of evangelical churches which forbid the teaching of Bible prophecy to their church churches. They forbid the teaching of the book of Revelation because they decided with their pea brains that they're smarter than God. They've decided with their pea brains that, you know, the people will be scared if we preach to them heaven and hell and uh, the book of Revelation and, and uh, the, re- the second coming of Jesus Christ, the Antichrist, the false prophet, the seven-year tribulation. The people will be frightened and not come back. And I said, you know, that is so ludicrous um, it's hardly worth commenting on, but I said that happens to be the position of 74% of evangelical churches, evangelical pastors, evangelical seminaries, and so on and so forth. So I said Jesus Christ spoke extensively about heaven and hell. So they're disagreeing with Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, by the way, is the founder and creator of evangelism. So these churches are claiming that they need to not talk about heaven and hell and Bible prophecy because it will hurt their evangelistic efforts and scare people away from hearing the gospel. Well, the gospel is invented by God. The whole gospel is the fact that Jesus Christ died on a cross uh, for everyone's sin. And it's because Jesus took the penalty of our sins upon himself on the cross and died as a sacrifice, sacrificial death uh, that you and I are able to have our sins forgiven by God and to be born again. And then we can enter the kingdom of heaven. And I said, if, you, if you, you're arguing with the designer, the great designer of evangelism, preaching the gospel, salvation, all of those messages. And you're telling the, telling the designer of the entire system of salvation and heaven and hell and the entire thing, you're telling the designer, the creator, capital C, that he doesn't know what he's talking about. But you, with your pea brain, and maybe you have you know a number of elders, and they also have pea brains. And I hate to break it to you, okay? If let's say, and I'm not knocking, please understand, I'm not knocking all pastors. There are many pastors in the minority who are faithful men and women of God, okay, who are serving the Lord. So please don't think I'm painting with a broad brush. But 74% of evangelical pastors fit into the category of the pea brain um, uh, putting itself through its pride and delusion above the wisdom of God. I said so. So if the pea brain, which in this case would be the pastor, and I'm not picking on pastors, the pea brain, and let's say he has 10 elders that help him make decisions. So let's say it's 11. Um, so the pastor, that's one pea brain, and 10 elders, that's 10 pea brains. That totals 11 pea brains. 11 pea brains. So I want you to imagine a white 
kind of, you know, uh, paper uh, plate, you know, what I'm talking about. And imagine 11 pea brains <clears throat> on a paper plate. Now, if you fit the 11 pea brains together, you can see it's not a very sizable object. Now, then, that represents, by the way, the sum total of their intelligence and wisdom, by the way, the 11 pea brains, in comparison to God, the Creator, uh, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, infinite <clears throat> brain and wisdom and knowledge, okay? And then to attempt to argue with God is like stupidity beyond belief. It's ludicrous. But that's what we see happening in churches, that the pea brains decide that uh, they're smarter than Jesus Christ, so they're going to preach uh, a, a message that doesn't talk about heaven or hell, or anything to do with the book of Revelation, or Bible prophecy. And I said, not only does the book of Revelation, it's, not, it's the only book in the Bible that promises you the reader a, a supernatural blessing from God if they read it faithfully. So if you want a blessing one day, just read the book of Revelation from beginning to end. You will be blessed by God. And then it also contains a warning that anyone who modifies, changes, distorts, or actually doesn't teach the entire book of Revelation. In context, God warns is under a curse by God. So to be unfaithful with the teaching of the book of Revelation is to place yourself under a curse by God. And that's so serious to God that the warning continues in the book of Revelation that that person uh, will have their name blotted out from the book of life, so they won't be saved. Now, you cannot make any sense of the fact of why Jesus Christ had to die for your sins and why you need to be born again, unless you also understand the book of Revelation, because the book of Revelation develops all these themes throughout the Bible, such as the great white throne of judgment, where every person who rejected Christ's free offer of salvation by faith, will be sentenced by God to eternity in the lake of fire because his or her name is not written in the book of life and your name has to be written in the book of life to go into heaven. So that's one huge critical event. And it's also a major reason why it's imperative to accept Christ. But you don't get that if you've never been taught the book of Revelation. And then believers are guaranteed entrance into heaven with a new glorified body, but they uh, will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. In other words, if they waste the gift of their life and talents, everything that they've done for the Lord out of a pure heart, everything they've done for the Lord out of obedience to his call, that will, that's the only thing that you and I are going to be able to take with us into heaven when we die. The only thing that goes with us is what we did for Jesus Christ out of a pure heart and out of obedience. That we bring into heaven. It's called, Jesus calls it laying up treasures for yourself in heaven. So we, we bring that like it's jewels and precious gold. It actually goes with us <clears throat> into heaven. And we're rewarded in heaven for faithfulness, okay? All the stuff that we did for self or disobedience, or whatever, that's all burned up. And the intense burning, which is God's holiness, is so intense, it says that there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth and screaming as they pass through like somebody who manages to, to, to get out of their house right before it collapses in flames, they get into heaven, but there's no reward for them in heaven. But so, I mean, being in heaven alone is a massive, massive reward, but they, they, they don't get any re rewards for service down here on earth. So it's important to understand that. And only the book of Revelation teaches that truth. It's important to understand that Christ is, co is coming back, and he's coming back to judge the earth and to destroy the Antichrist, Satan, and the false prophet. There's so many truths in the book of Revelation that you are committing, literally, a criminal act of disobedience 
before the Lord Jesus Christ when you fail by volitional choice to teach Bible prophecy in the book of Revelation. So I was using that as an example, the, the, the cell phone or pea brain analogy sitting under the mind of Christ, which is infinite. And then the other thing is when it comes to knowledge, uh, real knowledge, not, not uh, brainwashing, mind control, fantasy, uh, illusions. Because you see, Jesus Christ said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Now, it's right here at this juncture that people, every person on planet Earth, parents who are trying to raise their young children in the fear and admonition of the Lord, and they want to see their children become born again and serve God and walk with God. That's their greatest desire. Any godly mother who's born again, any godly mother, any godly father or godly grandparent, their greatest desire is to see that their children and grandchildren are born again, saved, and walking with the Lord. And then, of course, they want to see their children have a nice life and be blessed and be happy and stuff, of course. But any true woman of God, any any true uh, man of God, their greatest desire in their heart is to see their children walk with the Lord. So they do everything they can uh, while they're raising their children to try to influence their children to walk in the ways of the Lord. The Bible says, train up a child in the way that they should go, and when they're older, then they're going to walk in that way. So we as parents have a heavy responsibility on us. And this is why, at this juncture, I want to introduce a topic that I deal with a lot, but it is the ignorance level um, out there among Christians and non-Christians The ignorance level is so massive, the deficit in the brain, the the deficit of knowledge is so massive among Christians and non-Christians that the average person, both Christian and non-Christian, thinks erroneously when you bring up the subject. They think erroneously that this is like, a made-up story, a conspiracy theory, or, or whatever. And they can't, because it's too diametrically opposed to everything they've been taught to believe, to think, that they actually have an automatic reaction, like a knee-jerk reaction. They reject it almost violently if it's brought up to them, because it's too disconcerting. It's, it, it's, it's, like, it's like so intense... Uh, an amount of truth that because they've, for one reason or another, have not allowed themselves to understand that this is a real hidden dynamic going on in our society, they very much resist it when you bring it up to them. But it's probably in our age, I, I personally believe that in our age, our lifetime, by our age I mean, over the last 50 years and until the Lord comes, that this topic will, right now, this topic is only being spoken of by a small number, percentage-wise, of credible people, and then a lot of wackos that, that provide disinformation. But the, the, the truth that we're going to talk about is one I've talked about a lot, because it, it, it explains the answer to everything. And so you have to get over this barrier or hurdle that it's too fantastic to believe. Because if if you have bothered to do your homework, which most people don't, and if you've bothered to educate yourself, which most people don't, and if you've bothered to do any research, which most people don't, um, you know that this is a 100% verifiable topic. Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the reality and existence of secretive globalist elite. 
people, the people that rule the world, and this is not a conspiracy theory, this is a fact, and if you think it's a conspiracy theory, you need to get over that. Because, you you know, to your friends that are, like, in a trance state, they think you're really popular because you, like, squawk like a parrot conspiracy theory. You're one of them. But to people that are educated, knowledgeable, and know what they're talking about, you sound like a raving fool. A raving idiot. I mean, you really do. I mean, I don't mean that with any animosity in my heart. When I, when I talk to people, and they can be college-educated, have uh, very good incomes. They can be very powerful people in our earthly society. But when I have a conversation with them and uh, somehow something comes up and they they go into this like conspiracy conspiracy theory, you know, you know, fairy tale dismissing anything to do with like scientific mind control and indoctrination and brainwashing as being a valid reality and they go into their autopilot mode of mocking it and said etc you know i'm polite to to a point i mean i'm polite no i'm polite to a certain point because at a certain point i will politely um expose the fact and it's not done to be it's not done with any malice in my heart it's just at a certain point their argument is based on like a like a like a. You know, when I grew up in Jackson Heights, Queens, people would buy a soda or whatever in a small brown paper bag, not booze, soda. We were kids, okay. So we would often blow the paper bags up at school and then pop them, you know, with our hands. So that's what their argument and their and their and their education is behind all their blabbing. They don't know what they're talking about. It's a bunch of hot air. And so it has to be exposed because they have, in reality, spent no time educating themselves on the subject, so they have no idea what they're talking about. They've never reviewed history. They've never done any research, investigation, and they've done no reading. I mean, zero. So really, they don't have a right at the, to speak at the table. They don't have a right to comment. I mean, they do for like three minutes. They can bring up the subject. But then if you probe them politely and gracefully, hopefully, and, you know, you you question them. You put them on. Instead of you being on the defensive because you're being accused of being a nut, a wacko, an extremist, and a conspiracy theorist, you should should never tolerate that. The best uh, uh, defense is a good offense. You should turn the argument around and question them. And but but the only way you can do that is you got to know some facts. You got to educate yourself. And you do that by simply asking them questions about history, like the history of scientific mind control. You might say you're aware of, of course, um, of Operation Paperclip in 1948. Uh, uh, when over 10,000 Nazi mind control and rocket scientists were secretly smuggled into the United States by CIA director Alan Dulles under the orders of Rockefeller, aren't you? And they'll probably lie and say, well, yes, of course. So then you say, it's like a little chess game, then you say, oh, that's good, I'm glad to hear that you know that. Now, now tell me about it. Um, What, you know, you're obviously aware of what happened to these scientists uh, uh, when they came to the U.S. And they'll go, yeah, so, so, so just, and then you, then you play a little dumb and then you say, well, tell me about it. Tell me what, what you think was the real story. Okay, so what you're doing is you're being subtle, which you need to be to win the argument. Now, they're going to attempt to bluff it, most likely. So here, you you really have a mandate not to cop out. You have a mandate to expose the fact that they have no clue what they're talking about. Because if you don't do that, you're going to allow the truth that you're trying to speak to be, to be walled off and demonized and marginalized and dismissed. And you cannot allow that. 
Okay, because by al- by allowing that, you allow this national illusion to persist. So th- they'll say something, but they won't know what they're talking about. And then you simply say, you know, I don't know where you you're, you're giving them the benefit of the doubt. Not that you're really giving them the benefit of the doubt. And that's allowable in scripture, by the way. It's called being wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So, so you know, you give them their, their self-respect, even though they don't deserve any. And you say, well, that's interesting that you, you, you said that because uh, I've, I've read a number of books on the subject. And uh, um, that's not uh, what the historians and the documentation says. Okay. And you will be right because they're going to be making it up. And, and then that exposes they don't know what they're talking about, okay? But, but, but you don't leave it there. You have, to, you have to firmly pin them down that they don't know what they're talking about. They can't have any wiggle room because they'll change the subject. They'll get emotional. They'll start yelling and say, oh, you're just a conspiracy theorist. You see, the, the, the strategy of human beings in our society today, if you're presenting them with truth and you box them in, they will change the conversation from an intellectual one or a historical one or one based on documentation just to blow to blowing out a lot of emotion by hollering and screaming and mocking at you, calling you names and conspiracy theorists. But all that is is camouflage or su- a substitute for the fact. It, it, all that is is the cover to, to, to trying to conceal that they have no clue what they're talking about. So you, you just like a machine gun, but a little bit more calm, you pin them down with these questions. And in each question, you're exposing they have no idea uh, of what they're talking about. You're familiar, by, you're familiar of course, with uh, uh, MKUltra. They'll say yes, because most people have heard of MKUltra. Now, why do you think, and then you would say, well, why do you think they used the basic formula of pain, drugs, and hypnosis? They will have no clue. And then you play dumb again and you say, well, I thought you told me that you'd done research and reading on subject of scientific mind control. In other words, the, the thing is you've got to trap them and expose the fact that they're lying and bluffing. Because if you don't do that, you are limiting the sped, spread of truth uh, in society. And you're not being unkind by doing this. You know, true, un, unlike what you probably heard in church, True love confronts. If you really love somebody, like a parent who loves their child, they'll confront their child uh, when their child's doing something wrong so they can save their child's life and develop their child's character. True love confronts. So you're not really loving your neighbor as yourself if you're, if you're not willing to confront them because you will, because it's only when they know the truth that the truth can set them free. And that's how truth spreads virally in a society. So what we're, we're, where we're going with this is there's a fundamental fact. Well, there's a number of fundamental facts that we have to establish. And, but it, we have to establish it each in our own minds. You don't have to be a super expert, but you've got to know the basic facts. And there's like three or four basic facts that you need to know. And the first fact would be that in ancient civilizations like the Babylon at the time of the Tower of Babel, uh, uh, the um, Pharaoh, what I call the Pharaoh God King system at, at the time of the Pharaoh with the great Egyptian pyramids, And at other time periods, like in the 1600s, with Sir Francis Bacon, one of the most brilliant intellectual scientific leaders and occult advisors to the Queen, that in all these empires and many, many others, that the super elite, okay, of these secret societies, like the elite the secret of occult elite that ruled Babylon and Egypt and the queen and empire after empire, that the pharaoh, for example, in Egypt, he learned how to use mind control and brainwash his slaves at a level that is so sophisticated 
that it can't really be duplicated yet by uh, modern governments that you that routinely use brainwashing and scientific mind control. In other words, Pharaoh, he has sorcerers and magicians and other occult advisors that could literally brainwash people to be slaves and they wouldn't remember stuff and they were programmed to do stuff. Very sophisticated. The same with ancient Babylon. Very sophisticated occult advisors. And the proof of that, of course, is just read the accounts in Scripture. In my book, uh, A Prophecy of the Future of America, 2016-2017, even though it says that dates, it should say 2016-2030 to or something. Because I talk about the secret of mind control, economics as magic, and some very heavy-duty stuff. And it's really a very relevant book. I wish I just didn't come up with the title uh, that ended in 2017, because it's not even remotely dated. And I examine deeply the biblical account of Daniel the prophet, who was interpreting the dreams and visions of the king of Babylon. And in the Bible, it describes how the king of Babylon had this huge uh, group of advisors that were magicians and sorcerers and clairvoyants and astrologers, etc. And they they were heavy-duty occult advisors that utilized very, very real, not fake, occult power such as scientific mind control and brainwashing and all kinds of things. And then when you read the story of Joseph, who becomes the right-hand man to Pharaoh, God gives Joseph the supernatural ability to predict the seven years of famine coming, excuse me, to predict the seven years of plenty coming to Egypt and then followed by seven years of famine. And Pharaoh promotes him to the May, senior economic advisor, and he gives um, Joseph the same power that he has as, as the Pharaoh. And uh, what what Joseph was dealing with is that none, like Daniel, none of the occult advisors advising the king of Babylon or Pharaoh, and again, they had real power, real occult power, <clears throat> the magicians, the sorcerers, the false prophets, the clairvoyants, and all the rest of them, could not interpret Pharaoh's dream. Only only a man of God with the spirit of God in him could interpret the dream. And in fact, both of these men, Pharaoh and the king of Babylon, were so powerfully influenced <clears throat> by the prophet Daniel and Joseph that they proclaimed that the God of Daniel and the God of Joseph was the real God. See, that was powerful evangelism. So the point is, <clears throat> you have to understand that scientific mind control, brainwashing, as a means of controlling the masses, as a means, and this is why I developed the term, the Pharaoh God King system, all these secret uh, occultic empires, which, which continues right on till today, by the way, um, employed scientific mind control, except they didn't call it scientific mind control back then. They just called it brainwashing or whatever, or magic, or sorcery. <clears throat> they didn't use the word scientific, but it employed the same principles. They used drugs, altered states of consciousness, hypnotic techniques, and other means to program people to, to be their slaves and for, to be assassins or whatever. And it was a very effective. And this secret knowledge has been passed on from secret society to secret society. That begins in ancient Babylon. That's why it's known as Mystery Babylon. And it continues right up until today. So here's the first fact, the foundational truth that you must know to be an effective, to be effective in presenting the truth to people, and a method which you can easily master so that people don't make fun of you. You can win the argument, and that opens the door for the preaching of the gospel. And that is, once you understand 
a principle that is not known by most people, both secular or Christian, is that all civilizations throughout history, all empires throughout history, secretly ruled their people through mass mind control, through occult brainwashing, through uh, putting people into trance states that utilize drugs and music and sensory deprivation and uh, sexual, uh, sexually immoral rituals, etc. And, oh, the other important thing to understand is that all scientific mind control, brainwashing, trance states uh, are always utilizing occultic satanic power, whether they admit it or not, going back to Babylon, going back to Egypt. So what you have to understand is that the real history of the world, now the Bible explains the real history of the world very clearly. If you read the Bible to learn history, the Bible reveals this. It unmasks this. The problem is that most Christians read their Bible um, with evangelical sunglasses on, and they distort, they, they're, they're missing you know, 90% of the truth in the Bible. It's bursting forth. God is lighting the way. He, everything I'm suggesting to you, I'm not just making up off the top of my head. The Bible reveals it. Why do you think God goes to such great length? And this is just two examples to expose <clears throat> the occult rulers that gave uh, the king of Babylon his power and the occult rulers that gave Pharaoh his power. Power. <clears throat> What do you think Mystery Babylon is all about? Mystery Babylon is an occultic, satanic system of control that employs the usage of demonic powers, demonic wisdom, and Satanism to control the masses as slaves. Okay, well, in our time, the same thing is going on. They're just incorporated science and doctors and psychiatrists and neuroscientists and others, and it's called scientific mind control, but the whole, the whole paradigm is essentially the same as when it was simply called sorcery and the occult. And by the way, when you really scratch beneath the surface behind all this scientific mind control, it's always connected to Satanism, occultism, satanic rituals, etc., etc., no matter how much the people involved in it just say it's pure science. It's never pure science. That's why it was the Nazi mind control scientists who first developed mk ultra which was a method of total brainwashing of the human personality and the nazi mind control scientists experimented on the victims of the concentration camps and mk ultra is based on the classic formula of uh, all brainwashing which is pain Drugs, hypnosis, which was we used in ancient Babylon and with the Pharaoh. Pain or shock or trauma, sometimes known as trauma-based mind control, or extreme psychological stress, opens a portal into the human subconscious mind. Now, remember, the human mind is 92% subconscious, 8% conscious. So when somebody is experiencing horrific uh, psychological or biological pain or stress or shock or trauma that automatically causes a person to enter a psychological state known as cognitive dissonance or a trance state or a hypnotic state because the, the mind and the body's innate intrinsic method of dealing with overwhelming shock or biological pain is to is for the for a person's brain mind and body to kind of split or separate in other words let's say god forbid that somebody has to saw off your leg on the battlefield and there's no painkiller and there's no uh there's no uh alcohol or anything and they experience the pain well the pain is so off the charts that they go into an altered state of consciousness. They actually almost leave their body, okay? Because as a defense mechanism, 
the body and mind separate. So they go into like a trance state, a super trance state to deal with it. Same with severe psychological pain or stress. The mind and body separate and people go into like an unreal world, even if it's just subtle or a trance state. Because what is cognitive dissonance? Cognitive means thinking, but your normal rational thinking processes become separated in cognitive dissonance and you enter like a trance state or this is also known as a disassociative state. You're, you disassociate with your real normal personality and self and you split. You have like a mystical self looking at your real self and thinking your real self is somehow unreal and it's a defense mechanism. So people involved in scientific mind control or ancient sorcery or um, magic knew this formula. And then you amplify this experience a thousandfold by the use of powerful mind-altering drugs like LSD and other drugs. And that amplifies this entire experience. And then when, when you've blown someone's mind, so to speak, and their, their, their mind is like in some kind of altered, hypnotic, super trance state because of the pain and the drugs, okay, you, then you have this wide portal into the subconscious mind that's wide open, and when a person's in that state, then you can hypnotize them or hypnoprogram them to believe anything you want them to believe, to, to have multiple identities, to have this political ideology, this kind of sexuality, that kind of sexuality. A person could be programmed to be what's called an MK Ultra Manchurian candidate or assassin. A person could be programmed to be a, what's called a beta kitten sex slave. And this goes back to ancient civilizations where... Uh, both male and female sex slaves were used to spy, conduct espionage, or potentially assassinate rulers and powerful people, or, or at the very least, get information from them. So this is all real stuff. So um, what you need to know is that it's real. It has been adopted by intel intelligence agencies, because it was the CIA, by the way, Alan Dulles, under the orders of Rockefeller, brought in the Nazi mind control scientists, promoted them to positions of the highest levels of power at laboratories, universities, think tanks, and they began to full speed ahead, literally abduct American children, especially in the 1950s. We don't know how many, whether it was 20,000, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000. It was a massive number. And they targeted especially American children who were children in the 1950s and part of the 1960s. And then they broadened out to adults. But children were the primary target. And that was the primary year. Now, um, and they were programmed. And see, the person who's programmed can't remember they were programmed because it's buried into the subconscious. But the programming can be activated by a trigger word or a trigger, trigger symbol or a, uh, a, 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 any, anything uh, that can be communication. A trigger visual, trigger colors, trigger numbers, sequential numbers like one, two, five, seven, eight, you know, but it could be anything or roses are red and, or some poem, po little poem, you know, uh, and this, it's just like, that's the hypnotic command to awaken the program self, which could be assassin, sex slave, or, you know, a raving Marxist or a raving conservative or, or whatever. Now, here's the thing that you have to understand this. This is very important because this, this is the foundation. And, and unless you know the foundation, you can't move to the application because the application is far more pervasive and universal than you have any idea of. You're listening to the Paul McGuire Report. I'm Paul McGuire. You can get thousands of pages of free articles with great pictures. You can 
tap into for free. I don't know how many countless hours of uh, the radio archives of the Paul McGuire report. You can visit our um, Roku television channel. The name of the channel is Paul McGuire Ministries and watch broadcast quality Bible teaching from me, prophecy teaching uh, ministry and really get built up and fed. It's so easy to access a Roku channel. So easy. And it's free, by the way. Most of the new TVs come with them. A Roku uh, thing built in. And if your TV is an older TV, I think it costs like 20 bucks. You can get it on like Amazon or whatever, or get a used one or whatever. It's, and it's not, If you don't know how to hook it up, it's really simple. But if you don't know how to hook it up, call a teenager. They can hook up in three, three minutes. It's just amazing <laughs> how that works. So... You can take advantage of that, and we have so many free resources for you. And then you're always welcome to come. People fly in from all over the world, all over the United States, all the time, to come to our Paradise Mountain Church meetings, which we hold regularly. And we post the date, which is coming up soon, of the next Paradise Mountain Church meeting. We've been holding them in a hotel in Studio City, California. And uh, you'll be blessed, and there's a time of ministry and worship, and people come from everywhere. And people's lives literally are miraculously changed. I meet people who come to a meeting, and and God moves, touches them powerfully. And I may not see them for four years, or, and then they come back. And then they say, this one guy came up to me and said, we where we, he was standing talking to me, and he said, it was right here, Paul, about four years ago when you first had a meeting here, because we'd moved. We've had our meeting at self, several hotels, uh, uh, well-known hotels in the uh, Los Angeles-type area. And uh, he said it was about four years ago when you first started meeting here, but because we've changed hotels a number of times. And we had come back, and he said it was right in this exact spot. He said, you were praying on the platform, and the power of God came down so strongly in the room. The power of the Holy Spirit came down so strongly in the room, he said, while you were praying, that I felt this, I heard this voice in my head. I was talking about the voice of God. He said, commanding me to get on my knees, because he said, and he said, I was resisting, Okay. But he heard the, the voice of the Lord telling him to get down on his knees and pray. And then he said, all of a sudden, about a minute later, uh, the Lord uh, told you, me, Paul McGuire, the Lord told me to get on my knees. So I got down on my knees in obedience to the Lord and began praying. And then he said that that was like a confirmation to me that what I was hearing from the Lord was real and then I got down on my knees, knees he said, <clears throat> and the power of God swept through me, delivering me from all kinds of things and setting me on fire and healing me and restoring me. And so he left the meeting with a radical, positive transformation in Jesus Christ. And I hear reports of that all the time from people who are, because I personally pray for everybody who comes to the meetings, if they want to be personally prayed for and uh, I hear I hear that all the time from emails and everything else, and it's just it's just the fact that we we seek the face of God, we have uh, an intercessory prayer uh, group that's all over the world that that these are men and women who have obeyed the voice of God, God and are regularly praying an intercession for me, the ministry, and my family, and the results of the ministry. And it's because of the prayer warriors of the, the people involved in intercessory prayer that these miracles happen all the time. This uh, one lady came, and I, I, there's certain things that you know happen in the meetings as a result of the ministry or me praying or whatever. But it's not. sometimes they're not areas which I really focus in on, and they're not areas which... I necessarily feel led to like specialize in uh, this one woman who was a pastor's wife, and you know I don't consider myself like a person who 
I mean, God uses me when I pray for people to be healed, and people get healed all the time. And But that's not an, an area of, like, emphasis for me. And I don't even think I was talking about healing. So this pastor's wife came in the room with a serious shoulder arm injury where she couldn't move it. And she'd been prayed for a bunch of times, different ministries and stuff, and went to the doctor. She said she came into the room where I was ministering, sat down, and she said within a, a number of minutes, she could feel the Holy Spirit touch her arm, and she was totally healed. And so like, she was jumping for joy and thrilled because she was in pain. Now, that was just God moving because I wasn't, I wasn't praying for people's healing at the time. Uh, and it just God moved. And we've had, we've had people that have come. Uh, and, and, and again, this area is something that I don't want to specialize in. But if the Lord sends somebody into the meeting who's hurting and wants prayer, I'm not going to say no for crying out loud. And I've had people come to the meeting who were from multi-generational satanic families who wanted to be delivered. So we, we just obey the Lord and we lay hands on the person. We try to be very, do things decently in order. But people have been delivered from demonic possession. People have been supernaturally healed and delivered from all kinds of things. Answers to prayer regarding careers, provision financially, answers, guidance, blessing. A lot of people need the blessing of God on their job, what they're trying to accomplish or whatever, their marriages or, or single mothers, you know, uh, who are raising children alone. They need the power of God and the blessing of God. And God is really generous and God is really good and he heals and he answers prayer. And it's not because I'm something special. It's simply because if you're faithful to have people pray, and you step out in faith and pray, God moves miraculously. So that's the confirmation of the preaching of his word, because the ministry is word-centered, and then I firmly believe you need to apply the word of God to reality. Otherwise, what good is it? So visit paulmcguire.us, paulmcguire.us, and if you feel in your heart that this message or any message from any Paul McGuire Report program blesses or speaks to you and you feel like somebody you know, you know, like the Lord's prompting you to send a link of this message to somebody, then you need to obey the Lord and have him send, send links to people that he's telling you to, to, to send them to. Because you know what? You're responsible. You're responsible. When the Lord puts that on your heart, he's not doing that because he's bored. And the same, and the same thing. If if you feel like kind of led, you think you feel led to send a link or whatever to somebody, and you have misgivings about it, then you need to wait on the Lord to see if the misgivings are your fear, or there's a check in your spirit that you shouldn't send a link of the program to somebody because they're not ready yet or whatever. What the key thing is that you obey the Lord. So. Um, that's so important that people spread this message far and wide uh, because, look, the Internet in just the last year is so rigged. I could name 10 ministries and uh, alternative media news organizations. I could name 20 off the top of my head that are legitimate, that they're credible. The ministries are legitimate and credible. And those ministries, even though they have the largest amount of followers than the ones that are getting posted up on the first page of the search engines, they're being censored right off the search engines. They're trying to hide the credible ministries. So the way you break that stranglehold is you send links. Uh, they're waging war on the truth, okay? There are people waging all-out war, and some of that war is through social media and the Internet, kicking people off, tearing them down off the Internet. But the most insidious way is to make sure that people can't, Find them. They disappear. You gotta like be go the extra mile, which most people won't do, to to look up these ministries. And and the way you help is you, when God tells you to send a link of a program, not just with my ministry and other ministries that you trust, then send it. Get it out there. 
And I want to share, share this just very briefly. Um, a number of years ago, many, many times in my life, the Lord has prompted me to do something or told me to do something. And most of the times they do it. Okay. Now, but I do it a lot more. My, my, my obedience rate is far higher than what it used to be. Because I'll tell you, the Lord chastised me on a number of occasions. I remember my wife and I, uh, there was a mother, a Christian mother that my wife and I knew, and she had a daughter who was having problems in her life, who, who was a born-again Christian. But well, I don't know what the problems were, but there were serious problems, and she was concerned about her daughter. So she brought her daughter, who was at that time about our age, to our home in Southern California, and we just talked for like three hours, and she, the, the daughter opened up and stuff, and we had a good conversation and stuff. The mother was there. And I don't know what it was, but I was distracted, and I, I, the Lord was prompting me in my heart that there was something going on in her life deeper and potentially more serious, and that she needed, really needed God's intervention. But God didn't say to me what it was, okay? And so we did pray for, her, but we didn't we didn't go we didn't really uh, really seek the Lord and really call down the power of God and really uh, allow the Spirit of God to move in, okay? And so so we kind of quasi obeyed the Lord. Now, it was about six months or seven months later, we found out that this girl had committed suicide. And I won't tell you what caused it, but, but because it uh, might violate somebody's privacy. But I was so remorseful and so, such under conviction because I felt like the Lord said, I sent her to your house, Paul, for a reason. And that reason was that you would pray with her and she'd experience the deliverance and healing. And, and you failed to, to heed my, and this wasn't condemnation, this was a rebuke from the Lord. You failed to, to tune in to me when I was speaking to you, you know. And, and I mean, I was like, the Lord wasn't working me over, but I I can't explain the problem which caused it. It had something to do with biochemistry in her brain. Let's just put it that way. And um, I really, it was, a, it was a warning to me. The Lord said to me, you need to pay attention when you're walking around. You can't just be a casual Christian. If I tell you something, you know, then you need to obey it because I, I'm not telling you something, or I'm not arranging this circumstance for just, you know, it's not just circumstantial. I sent that girl to your house, and you missed it, because you were being, you know, a casual Christian, and you really weren't tuned into me. And the Lord has rebuked me a number of times over my life, and... It's not that I'm perfect. I'm not, but by but when that Lord, when the Lord makes that uh, it's a s still small voice, I try to hearken quickly because what haunts me is God forbid that I should zone out and miss something that God wants to use me to 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 stop something, you know, a, a great evil. You know what I'm saying? And every one of you listening to me, the Paul McGuire report, you are being presented with those opportunities also. And, and, and I'm not here to condemn anybody. Um, but I'm here to say, make sure when the Lord speaks to you in that still small voice, you know, he's not going to always announce everything with trumpets and lightning bolts in the sky. It just will be a still small voice. And if you miss the voice of the Lord, you you may have been assigned to, you may have been the one, you know, 
who keeps people walking in the ways of the Lord and prevents all kinds of tragedies. So when I say to you, if the Lord is speaking to you in a still small voice to send this Paul McGuire Report program or any program, or even somebody in some other ministries program, you know, obey the Lord because you just don't know what's at stake. And so it's not just like, oh, you know, he's recommending it. No, no. If the Lord is telling you to do something, do it. Okay. And in the same way with books, if the Lord says, I want you to read this book, the Lord tells me all the time, I want you to buy this book, I want you to read this book, I want you to study this material. And a lot of times, it's out of the box of what I normally read. And you know what? The Lord has me read it for a reason. A lot of times, um, the Lord will uh, bring things my way, and I know it's Him. And, and then there's a lot of times when the Lord says, you need to call this person, you need to email this person, you need to, to do this or that. Um, I was at a, a, a store here in the United States. I just forgot it. Trader Joe's, okay? And I told this to you. I shared this to you a number of months ago. I'm there to do shopping, okay? People think the place is expensive. No, it's not expensive. It's actually got healthier and better food. And if you know how to shop there, okay, and look for the deals, it's far cheaper than one of the big-time grocery stores, but you got to know how to shop there, okay? Just like any place. Because if you shop right there, you, you, you won't be spending a lot of money. It's not expensive. Okay, so there's a guy. I walk over to they give you these little three itsy-bitsy cups of coffee to sample the coffee so they can sell the coffee. So I walk up to that coffee thing to get this little cup. There's a guy who's just hanging out there. And for some reason, I just said hi or something, and he said something. And then I felt led to talk to him by the Spirit of God, and I obeyed it, and I talked to him. And the next thing I know, within minutes, I, the Lord is prompting me, and he's opening up. And it turns out that this guy was one of the biggest drug dealers on the West Coast for X amount of years, okay? You wouldn't know it by looking at him. He just looked like a college guy from, like, it was two years into college. But he was a huge time top of the network drug dealer and but he stopped taking drugs and stuff and you could tell that he was like demonized and oppressed okay and trying to keep his head together so i ministered to him in the aisles of trader joe's trying to keep my voice down and then i realized i couldn't keep ministering to him because people would listen and then i felt very led to lay hands on his head and pray for him to be delivered because i felt this demonic oppression and just using common sense, I said, you know, in the Trader Joe's aisles, this is not a good place. Uh, if you're laying hands on him, uh, praying for deliverance, he might, you know, there may be some kind of emotional reaction. This isn't wisdom. So I told him, let's go outside. When we went outside to walk to the side in the, in the corner near the entrance of Trader Joe's where, where people weren't standing around, we were kind of alone. And then he told me, out of his mouth, I didn't prompt it, something about the fact that he felt this, he, he was indwelt by this demonic presence or something. Okay, he told me that. I wasn't looking for it. And then I also had this distinct impression that he was not born again, even though he said he thought he might have been. So the first thing I did is I prayed for him, put my hands on his head, took authority over uh, the principalities and powers, and I commanded any demonic power or demon inside him to leave right now in the name of Jesus, or any demonic influence externally to leave right now in the name of Jesus. And then you continue to pray till you feel the release of the Spirit of God, and you feel the oppression or the exiting of the demonic, which I felt. And then I prayed the sinner's prayer with him, and he invited Christ in his life and was born again. Now, I'm not saying, telling you the story to, to say, hey, what a wonderful Christian I am. I'm telling you the story to say that if I had not paid attention to the voice of the Lord, because this was a total surprise, unexpected thing, I would have failed the mission, which is to lead him to Christ and have him be delivered. Because God set up that meeting. What are the chances that I meet one of the biggest drug dealers 
on the West Coast who gets out of that business and is kind of dealing with going insane, hanging out in a uh, Trader Joe's. So the point is, always listen to the voice of the Lord. It's so, it's so, so absolutely critical. All right, this is the Paul McGuire Report, and we will be back in just a moment. Now, by the way, visit paulmcguire.us. That's paulmcguire.us. You are listening to the Paul McGuire Report, and again, you can go to our website, get tons of free information, sign up for the uh, newsletter, join the uh, YouTube channel, go to the Roku channel. You can join the the uh, Facebook page, but you want to go to the Paul McGuire public Facebook page because the private Paul McGuire page, I think, is maxed out, and so they won't let you join it. But you can get all that stuff by go- by being uh, a friend or partner of the Facebook page, the, the public Paul McGuire one. And uh, we also communicate on Google and Twitter, and you should be connected. Now, um, I wanted to say one thing. A lot of what we're talking about, if you want knowledge about this kind of thing, get my book, Conquering the Matrix. It deals with scientific mind control, trans states, all of this stuff, how to recognize if you're under the influence of it to whatever degree, if your children are, how to defeat it, how to break it, how to be set free, but also understanding the dynamics of it. And that's in my book, Conquering the Matrix. In the book, Mass Awakening, I talk about mass mind control and how God wants to raise up a mass godly awakening. But if God's people don't repent and start seeking his face, um, the evil one is going to raise up a mass demonic awakening. And we're seeing a lot of that happening in the United States of America right now. It's like people have taken off their masks, and we're looking at really angry, hateful, violent, and in some cases, demon-possessed people. So, you know, we need to be prepared, and we need to restrain evil. That's why Jesus Christ said, occupy until he comes. But we can't do that unless we're informed and knowledgeable. Also, in my book, um, A Prophecy of the Future of America, I deal with the Illuminati music videos and the barrage of the occult and how this affects the future of America in the next couple of years. This is very important if you want to understand like the music culture and other things and Illuminati music videos. And I will say this, the book tells the truth, but you know, I don't go off the deep end and make up a bunch of stuff. I'll just put it that way. Okay. So I did my homework. There's credibility and accuracy, uh, and this material will really help you gain knowledge. Um, also, the book, uh, the Babylon Code, uh, that I wrote with my co-author Troy Anderson, um, powerful book that deals with this whole history of mystery Babylon, the secret societies up to the present age. This has impeccable footnotes and documentation, and that would be a great resource for you. And then finally, Trumpocalypse, that I co-wrote with Troy Anderson, a Pulitzer Prize-nominated journalist. Because most Christians, I shouldn't say most, a, 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 a disturbingly large number of Christians have been brainwashed with propaganda, and they have all these criticisms against Trump and antagonisms that that were put that were targeted to put into the body of Christ through propaganda and they're based on lies and people don't even know what they're talking about and you need to get your head straight about who Donald Trump is and who he isn't and you can't do that unless you have knowledge this the stuff i hear christians say is appalling to me because it's ignorance of the worst form but worse than that it's ignorance that's leading to the destruction of america because They don't realize, because of their ignorance and not being educated on the subject, they are literally opening the door for a totalitarian state controlled by this very globalist elite that's employing mind control and other methodologies. So, um, get yourself a copy of those books or whatever book you want and uh, 
you will be educated. They're all easy reads, okay? And they're not boring. And they've changed people's lives all across the world. So I think that's important. Now let's get back into the, into the topic here. So here's the reality. The reality is that our modern world, in the words of Aldous Huxley, a member of the British elite, an expert on scientific mind control, he coined the term scientific dictatorship in which he said, in a, in a truly effective scientific dictatorship, men and women can be brainwashed or programmed not to even, know, they can be programmed to be slaves and not even have a clue that they are slaves, said Huxley. In addition, Huxley said, they can be programmed and brainwashed to love their duties as slaves and actually love their slavery and servitude because they, they, won't, they won't even know they're slaves. Now, Huxley used the term scientific mind control, but Huxley was part of the British elite that worked with British intelligence, the Tavistock Institute, uh, the CIA, and uh, the, incorporated the Nazi MK Ultra mind control program. He came to the United States first in 1936. He lived up on Lookout Mountain, Laurel Canyon. I used to live up on Lookout Mountain in Laurel Canyon. And ironically, I didn't know that because I wrote my first Christian books there. I came to Hollywood to be a feature film producer. I produced a number of science fiction films um, when we were living up there in Lookout Mountain. But I didn't know the, the real occult and mind control history of Lookout Mountain. And by the way, I, I was not victimized, thank God, by this mind control system. But people like Timothy Leary, I would run into at the exercise place. He lived up there. Uh, Aldous Huxley lived up there. Oh, on and on. Uh, and then there was a secret mind control laboratory up there on Lookout Mountain, which I accidentally discovered when I was jogging up the mountain and I wanted to look down into this valley up higher in the mountain through the bushes and the shrubs. And when I looked down, I thought it was some uh, the compound of some kind of cult because it, was, it looked like an, a school building. And, but I thought it was a cult compound, you know, some kind of Hollywood occult cult, you know what I'm saying? So I didn't know it was a mind control laboratory until years after we left living there. And what I was looking down on wasn't the compound of a cult. It was a mind control laboratory. And so Huxley came there in the 1930s to spread the psychedelic drug mescaline. He was also involved in MKUltra and programming and reprogramming people through drugs, hypnosis, pain. He was an expert in that. And uh, that spread across the nation to places like Stanford University and where Ken Kesey, the, the merry prankster who drove the psychedelic painted school bus and held uh, the electric Kool-Aid acid test, he worked for the CIA. And he turned tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people onto LSD by putting LSD in these giant vats of Kool-Aid and distributing them at Grateful Dead concerts and beaches and place like, places like that. So, Huxley was a member of the British elite. Now, the point is this. Modern, modern mind control, which has its roots in Babylon and Egypt, the secretive elite, which is the globalist elite, the people that are the, at the top of this occult hierarchy, um, they are the wealthiest, most powerful people in the world. And they have learned by passing on the secret knowledge through secret societies from generation to generation, they've learned how to control the world, control the nations in the European Union, control the United States and other nations covertly and secretly through scientific mind control. So things like television, rock and roll music, hip-hop, rap, even country music can be used as instruments of mind control. Television programs, movies, episodic t TV can be used as uh, uh, conveyors of mind control and propaganda. 
and radio, and it's all very, very sophisticated. In fact, this elite group uh, created the entire counterculture sex, drugs, and rock and roll movement of the 1960s, 1970s. Because isn't it interesting, they used pain, and that was the shock of the Vietnam War, the shock of President Kennedy being assassinated on television. They used um, LSD, which was MK Ultra Nazi doctor's ideal drug. That's why they distributed LSD to as many people as possible, young people, during the 60s and the 70s. And then when they opened up that portal to the subconscious mind, they embedded programming and mind control and hypnotic commands through rock and roll music, through uh, uh, subliminal messaging on AM and FM radio stations across the country that were all playing the same exact records that had the heavy-duty mind control lyrics in them, you know, the top 20, the top 10. Every AM and FM station were playing the exact same artists and albums and songs in rotation, no matter where you drove, drove across the United States. That was mass hypnotic programming. And then movies and other things. And they programmed, the, 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 the agenda, in their own words, was to destroy Judeo-Christian culture, destroy Christianity, destroy Christian marriage, destroy traditional values, destroy nationalism, and create a pagan, New Age, mystical, tribal, archaic society, uh, because that you could control that easier, and to create destroy nationalism, so you have the idea of a global government, you know, John Lennon song, Imagine, and that's what they did. They programmed an entire counterculture. Now they've been busy at work in the school systems. And the reason you see the violent behavior and the incredible stupidity uh, in the millennial generation is because they've been brainwashed. Those same technologies have been employed. So you need to realize that. You're not just raising your children and trying to be a mother or father or trying to be a human being in a world that most people, the world that most people think is real physically is the world which you can obviously see and experience with your physical senses. But see, that's a lie. The elite don't believe that. They teach that through the school systems because they want to control the masses. The elite know for sure there's a supernatural, multidimensional universe. The elite are all heavily involved in the occult and the Illuminati and Satanism, <clears throat> but they teach the average college student that there is no God, there is no supernatural. So, most people walk around assuming that reality is what they think it is because that's what they see with their eyes and their ears. And they're completely unaware of this invisible realm. And by the way, the Bible says there's an invisible realm. The Apostle Paul said, our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and the dark unseen forces of wickedness in heavenly places. That's talking about the spiritual world and the invisible realm, with the demons fighting with the angels, and the power of God and the power of Satan in conflict. But the person who doesn't believe in any of that, they are the most easily to be influenced by scientific mind control. Because the average person doesn't understand the facts, the documented facts, that public education is a mind control indoctrination system first and an educational system second. One of the most top leaders of the NEA, National Education System, said, he said it openly, the primary purpose of education is not the primary purpose of, of the public school system is not to educate, but to indoctrinate. And that's been said by hundreds of leaders in the educational system. That the primary purpose when you go to school or send your kids to school is not to educate them, it's to indoctrinate them. Indoctrinate is a fancy word for brainwashing. Okay, that's what they're doing. 
And in order to do that, they have to scientifically dumb down your children and, and, and adults' perception and intelligence so they can't think. Because if people could think and perceive properly, they would be aware of the fact that they're under mind control. So you have the vast majority of people in America so totally brainwashed that their response to somebody telling them that they're under the influence of propaganda, mind control, scientific mind control, and brainwashing, their automatic response is to laugh, to ridicule, to call it a conspiracy, to say you're a wacko, a nut, a right-wing extremist, blah, 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 blah. That's the, the, that's the automatic programmed response. And, and that's called hypnosis. That's called mass hypnosis. Because as long as you have the majority of people in America thinking that, the reality is, just like Aldous Huxley said, that in a truly effective scientific dictatorship, the people can be programmed and brainwashed to be slaves and to not and to not have any idea that they're slaves at the same time he was a member of the british elite they were responsible for launching this program so that's what you see this isn't just paul maguire's opinion and again if you want documentation get the books Conquering the Matrix, Mass Awakening, A Prophecy of the Future of America, Trumpocalypse, The Babylon Code. Read. The, the, the elite don't want you to read. They want you to spoon-feed spoon feed you all your information on your social media account and television and stuff, so you're dumbed down. They are very serious about this. They have created, you may think it's a science fiction movie, and it doesn't exist, they have created what is called a scientific dictatorship. And the primary purpose of the scientific dictatorship is to be a dictator. Except in the scientific dictatorship, the goal is to not use guns, bullets, and police. If, they, if they're on their job, according to Huxley, and doing their scientific dictatorship properly, it's all done through mass hypnosis, indoctrination, and programming, so people don't even have a conscious clue that they've been programmed. And that's where we are in America. The vast majority of people are in a trance state. No, it's not like they went to a hypnotist show and they're squawking like chickens and running around the stage. It's not like that. It's a subtle trance state, but it's very powerful. And here's an example of it which I write about in A Prophecy of the Future of America. I have a whole chapter on it, and I have whole cha chapters on it in Conquering the Matrix. Your ordinary television broadcast um, is emitting... Every television show you watch on your television screen is coming at you through a 10HZ signal. Now, a 10HZ signal is called an EMF wave, an electromagnetic frequency wave or uh, a brainwave. So when you're watching television, your mind is being bombarded with 10-HZ alpha state brainwave. What a 10-HZ alpha, and I go into deeper explanation in Conquering the Matrix and A Prophecy of the Future of America. What that state will do is it will put you in a subtle hypnotic trance. That's why people look zoned out watching the TV. It can be very effective in helping people learn and remember stuff. But the downside is that when you're exposed to a 10HZ alpha wave state from television, you can absorb everything, which is just what they want you to do in brainwashing, but the 10HZ brainwave state degrades your ability to, to discern, to discriminate, to use critical thinking, to question what you're seeing and viewing and hearing, and it diminishes your capacity to, to analyze. You're just like a sponge soaking up propaganda. Got that? That the average American is doing all day through their laptop, their cell phone, their, their big screen or whatever. Now, that is a mind control device. Now, you couple with that social media, the internet, 
mainstream media, cell phones, laptops, you have people in an electronic cocoon of mind control programming that consists of symbols, subliminal messages, Illuminati videos, visuals, certain kinds of audio, repetitive messages, and as Aldous Huxley said, one of the primary tools in brainwashing is repetition, 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 repetition. The more you hear something, okay, what happens is you can be told a lie, but if you hear it often enough and long enough, that lie will enter your subconscious mind and you will you can be programmed to believe a lie if you hear the lie repeated over and over again for a long enough period of time you see you can be a very rational and intelligent human being and you can be a very educated human being and you can even know a lot of the bible but you are a walking sucker to be brainwashed because your intelligence, your knowledge of the Bible, your education, your IQ, none of that makes you immune to brainwashing. Some of the brightest, most educated, intelligent people in the world are the easiest to brainwash. Just look a lot at certain cults. Cults all use brainwashing. And there's a lot of bright men and women in cults with genius IQs. So you have to remember the principles of brainwashing uh, override those things. And even among Christians, because I meet Christians all the time who know the Word of God, who pray, they're spirit-filled, but because they're ignorant of Satan's devices, to be blunt, or the wiles of the devil, because they, they lack education, specific education, and knowledge about what the actual techniques and procedures are that cause a person to be brainwashed or hypnotized or programmed or indoctrinated. It's like they left the front door open with a welcome sign for the burglars and the back door open with a welcome sign for the burglars without realizing it. You see, you, you have to, you have to, knowledge is power, knowing the truth will set you free. God expects you to, in today's environment, he expects you to have a basic, even minimal knowledge of an enemy that is very real, and that is the modern science of mind control, brainwashing, indoctrination, propaganda, hypnotic programming, which was also used in ancient civilizations. And it's only one. You don't have to become an expert. But, you know, it's like if you want to li live a long and healthy life, you better learn something about nutrition, vitamins, herbs, alternative uh, 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 healing, exercise. If you think that you can walk around in today's modern world and eat genetically modified foods, okay, like like a lot of Christians do, uh, and, and, and have no clue about what GMO foods are doing to your body, how you must supplement with, with nutrients that work, herbs, and other things, why you must have exercise, etc., and if you think you're going to live a long, full life, well, you may. But you know, a lot of these things like Alzheimer's, dementia, and many other things, despite what you're being told by the propaganda or lies, are, un are avoidable. But you've got to be proactive. You have to be aggressive. So that means if you want to live a healthy, you know, good life, not like, like with your brains gone, um... You better teach yourself something quick about nutrition and exercise and herbs and supplements. Because if you're not using those and you're relying on the American Medical Association, what a joke. You're going to die early or you're going to become a vegetable. So I want, I'm saying these words to shock you. So you've got to be up to speed. You have no choice in today's world. 
You know, maybe maybe 40 years ago, you could eat fruits and vegetables and they're nutritious. But if you think by just eating fruits and vegetables that are that are uh, genetically modified fruit, fruits and vegetables, that you're getting nutrition, you're crazy. Okay? Number two, people say, well, I just eat, you know, a lot of, fruit, a lot of fruits and vegetables. The fruits and vegetables today are not like they were 50, 60 years ago. There's no nutrients in them because they violate biblical laws, by the way, which, which allows the soil time to regain all the nutrients and minerals that produce tomatoes or whatever that have oranges that have minerals and vitamins in them. They just spray stuff on the soil, which is totally depleted of any nutrients, and they're growing artificially out of nutritionless soil, fruits and vegetables, you're not helping anybody. You're, you're, you're deceived through your ignorance and lack of education. And we could go down the list on that. The, the modern world demands that you show up to the plate. So this is true in the development of your brain, in enhancing your intelligence, in increasing your knowledge, turning on your perception, retaining your memory, the, the average person that I meet is settling for a far lower standard of life than God has for them because they've done nothing. And it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, they've done nothing to invest in their health, their mental growth and enhancement, their suffering. And is it the will of God for them to suffer? No. Do you just pray a prayer and it all disappears? No, but God is good. He blesses people, but he expects them to use their brain. So I'm telling you, you're, you are in a fight, a battle of the mind. But a real battle of the mind means that you use all the weapons of your warfare, the spiritual ones, the practical ones. And you need to know the dynamics of mind control, brainwashing, and hypnosis and you need to know how to recognize it, and you need to know how to overcome it and defeat it. The same in the nutritional area. So, the way you do that is find books, radio programs, whatever that, that you can trust, and, and teach yourself, because your friends next door, I guarantee you, are like, like in a, they're in a trance. And you don't have to be in a trance. Now, the books that I offer help support our ministry. The profits of the books, by the way, don't go to me personally on any of the books. They go into the ministry, period. So these books are written to help you. They will turn you on. I guarantee it. They'll turn you on. They'll blow your mind in the good sense. And you will have knowledge, which is power. So get yourself a copy of Trumpocalypse. You'll know what's happening right now. This week, in the political environment, get yourself a copy of Conquering the Matrix, Mass Awakening, A Prophecy of the Future of America, The Day the Dollar Died. If you want to know how the money system works, how it really works, not how you think it works, get The Day the Dollar Died. It's simple to understand a complex system. It'll make the money system easy for you to understand. And then... Um, we have tons of free stuff for you that you can send to your friends on a, a range of subjects that will help you. And that's the key. You know, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. So saving souls is our first order of business. Making disciples of all nations. That means teaching the principles of the Bible and how they apply to every sphere of life. Jesus Christ said, occupy the land until I come. That means we're not to, to sit around doing nothing until Christ returns. We're to occupy the land spiritually or to do kingdom business until he comes. How can we do that effectively? We must have knowledge because knowledge brings power. We must have understanding of our spiritual weapons, the power of God's word. I mean, hey, folks, I, I mean, I'm sorry for, for speaking like that. I did, It's not really how I like to speak to people, but it's like, for crying out loud, we are in the greatest spiritual battle in the history of mankind. I don't know how else to say it. Jesus Christ is returning soon. 
The signs of the times are screaming out at us everywhere. This whole new world order and one world government, one world religion, and one world uh, economic system was predicted in Genesis 11 when ancient Babylon was the world's first global system. The new world order is, is <laughs> it's mystery Babylon all over again. That's all it is. And you and I, open your eyes, look at a time when these globalist elite, what do they want? What do they talk about all the time? They talk about it all the time in public. The new world order, a new global order. That means the globalist elite, that's why they hate Trump. And you won't understand that unless you read a book like Trumpocalypse, which explains it, unmasks the lies. They hate, the globalist elite hate Trump because he's for making America great again. Why do they hate him? Because their plan is a global government in which they rule. The problem with that is the Bible very clearly says that God warns against the return of Babylon. God warns against a global government, a global economic system, and a global religion. That's why he judged ancient Babylon at the Tower of Babel. Then in the book of Revelation, it talks about the return of mystery Babylon, the great harlot, and the book of Revelation warns that the new world order will be birthed with a one world government, a one world religion, and a one world economic system headed up by the Antichrist and the false prophet and an economic system built upon the mark of the beast, 666, which is a microchip, nanochip implant, etc., etc. Why do you think these mind control people have been experimenting secretly with computer brain interfaces and wireless connectivity to your brain and a external computer system, wireless. You know why? Whether they realize it or not, they're moving us towards the mark of the beast, where you'll receive a tiny little chip, like it says in the book of Revelation, and you can't buy or sell in the economic system unless you renounce Jesus Christ as Lord and pledge to worship the Antichrist as God. But if you read the studies of this scientific mind control experimentation that's been going on for 40 to 50 years, which I have and studied intensively, you will see that a huge percentage of their experimentation has to do with putting a chip in people, controlling their emotions, uh, accessing their memory, controlling them, and it's a wireless system. The chip that they put in, they've been, since the 1940s, they've been putting chips in people, and before they had chips, they were putting electrodes in people, or uh, tubes in people, before they had the chip, and they've been experimenting with a wireless communication between the human brain and body and a computer somewhere for the purposes of total control. They have been experimenting it for, for year after year. They discussed this openly at Bilderberg conferences just four years ago. They were discussing it. One of their topics was the Microchip implant. What do you think they're talking about? They may not know the biblical uh, truth behind all this, but that's why they're obsessed with it, because they're being led by a force that they don't even understand. So this is all connecting, and your job is to know about it and not deprive yourself from the knowledge of God's prophetic word. That's why all of my books are rooted in the Bible and Bible prophecy. Okay, the hour is getting late, folks. It really is. Order out of chaos is their motto, which means new world order out of chaos. We see chaos and crisis everywhere. Our job is to reach as many people for Jesus Christ while the doors are still open, to make disciples of all nations, to bring back backsliders to Christ, to communicate biblical truth in a manner that engages people all across the U.S. and across the world. Our goal is to teach God's people how to occupy the land until he comes, no matter what nation you live in. And our job is to uh, teach God's people to do kingdom business until he comes. 
And we are, by the grace of God, highly effective in doing this in terms of percentiles. If you measure the size of our ministry with the ratio of effective results in terms of salvation and teaching the word and bringing in backsliders, we are highly, highly effective. That means we're good stewards. And that is possible. And something that I'm deeply thankful for is because many of you who are listening have obeyed the voice of the Lord and you've chosen to be intercessory prayer warriors for this ministry, for me, my family, and the outreach. And God, through your prayers, is moving this ministry forward. And praise God, that's partnering together in Christ. And those of you that know how to spread the messages we produce far and wide and do an end run around the censorship, I thank God for every one of you that have sought the the voice of the Lord, the face of the Lord, and are obeying him in that area. And finally, I thank God for all the men and women who have gone to the Lord, and they didn't play religious games. They didn't go to the Lord after having made up their mind beforehand about what they would give, what they would donate. They went to the Lord and simply said, Lord, how much do you want me to give or donate regarding Paul McGuire Ministries and Paradise Mountain Church? What do you want me to do, Lord, specifically? And they, they didn't make something out of, up out of their human imagination. They allowed the Lord to speak to them, and they did whatever God told them to do. And they donated and contributed. And it's because of that obedience in all these areas that we're able to do what we're doing, and we're growing and are going to continue to do it. And see, I want to just add that that's the secret to a victorious uh, and effective Christian life. If we're asking God for guidance in any dimension of life, we don't go to God with our minds made up and assume we already have the guidance. We go to the Lord um, asking him for his guidance, asking him for his direction, asking him for his wisdom. And, And then we wait on the Lord until he speaks to our heart about what to do with guidance and wisdom and direction. And then we obey him. We don't tell God what to do. It's amazing how many Christians I met meet who who, who say they're waiting on the Lord or they Jesus is Lord of their life. And and when it comes to obeying the Lord or, or, or trying to make a decision or guidance or whatever, they go to the Lord with their own idea, their own decision already made up. And then they pray a prayer where they don't really have any intention of waiting to hear what the Lord says to them. And then they wonder why the totality of their lives are not blessed. They're not blessed because you're faking it. You're faking it. That's called playing church. You go to the Lord, not with your mind made up in any area of life. You go to the Lord based on scripture, and you go to the Lord, and you seek his face and ask him to speak to you. And if you would do that simple thing, In every area of your life, you would see your life transform immediately. Immediately. Many of you are suffering unnecessary spiritual battles and unnecessary uh, stress and stuff. And I'm not here to condemn condemn you because I've made every every mistake that I'm exhorting you on, I have made. But but I just want to tell you, you, if you would incorporate just one principle... And that is when you seek the Lord, do it. Not you Don't play games with God. You can see right through it. You come to the Lord, you don't tell God what you've already made up your mind to do. You, you go before the Lord, and you release control of your life and decisions to him. And you say, Lord, what do you want me to do? Speak to me, Lord, about what you want me to do. Put something in my heart, Lord. And then... You wait upon him, and most of the time, the Lord will speak to you very quickly, if not instantaneously. Or you wait on the Lord till he does. But then you don't fall into the trap of daydreaming and forget that you're waiting on the Lord. (laughs) Because that's not going to do you any good. And then whatever he tells you to do, do it. And then you discover, oh, now I'm being blessed. Before, I was working my tail off at my job. I was working two jobs, three jobs. 
And that sounds good because you're being diligent, you're being responsible. I know how that works. I've had many three job periods in my career over the years. But when the, I would wait on the Lord and listen to the Lord, the Lord would, would show me an answer, a decision, a direction to move in. And he didn't want me to work three jobs, burning myself out, jeopardizing my health. He had a better plan for me. He didn't add stress to me. He actually removed it from me when I did what he told me to do, not what I thought I should do. So I really mean that. I mean, that will really, that will take a thousand bricks off your shoulders today if you would just begin the habit of doing that. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you for listening and prayerfully spread this message far and wide. God bless you. I'm Paul McGuire. 